Hello and uh, today I'm going to be developing a database driven application and it's going to be a very simple application uh, but um, bear with me because uh, YouTube doesn't allow you to allow me to upload a web I mean any video that is longer than 10 minutes so I'm going to try and speed things up but if these uh, particular video is longer than 10 minutes I have to chop into two so uh, you can see the what I have later so let's get down to business um, I'm going to create a new website and um, uh, sorry I'm going to create a new website it's going to be an ASP.net website and uh, I'm going to give you an, a name let's just say database uh, because the reason why I'm doing this video is I've realized that a lot of people are scared of <laughs> creating a, a database driven application I mean it's, it's very simple and there's nothing to worry about so this is um, the default let's go to design and see it let's give it let's just type something let's just say database example and uh, now we're ready to rock so um, the next thing you want to do is add a new item because you're adding a you want to create a database application you just have to add a SQL Server database you can name this uh, anything you want um, I want to create a student database so let's just name this student.mdf because you can have more than one database in an application so uh, it's totally students so uh, let's add that you're attempting to add a special file type to an ASP.NET website in general to use this type of item in your site you should place it in the app data folder do you want to yes always say yes to most of the default well not all the time but you know just to make your life easier right so the student database has been added if you want to know how it got here is can you see the tab at the bottom that's the solution explorer this is the way you usually work with and this is the database explorer so you can toggle between the two uh, can you see what he was saying he said he was going to create a new folder for her scope app underscore data and place the student database inside the update of the data folder so that's what it was so that's why we said yes right so you can refresh okay that's it your connection is established if you expand this table node you can see there's no tables at all in our database so what you want to do is add a new table just right click on the tables and say add new table so here we can add our student date student table so uh, the first column will be student ID if you've done any previous database you know the ID is very important and the ID is going to be an integer right this feels more as like access isn't it so it's no big deal and because this is the ID column you want to set you know at the bottom here you want to set the identity specification you want to say that this is the identity and the reason why you want to do that is because this will increase automatically so if your first student is number one the next student will be number two number three but if you want to change the value to start from one you can actually modify it here the identity increment is one right and the identity seed is also one so I think the seed is the beginning yeah that's the beginning so you can make it to start from 10 or 1000 your first student is number 1000 and identity increment is one so you can also make that one to increase by say two so if it increases by two the first student will be 1000 the second student will be 1002 then the next one will be 1004 and so on and so forth so always remember to set this bit and also even though we have set it to be the identity we haven't set it to be the primary key so this is where you do that select this student ID from here you can see it's selected select it and click on this little key say set primary key so now we've set it to be the identity uh, set, and we have set it to be the uh, primary key so the next one is um, 
student student first name so some people have really long names so let's choose the end virtual 50 you know character 50 uh, 50 characters long that's what that means 50 characters long I don't want it to be no that means if a value is not submitted he's going to throw an error because um, I want the first name I want it so students last name also some people can have a really long name so let's put it to be 50 to be on the safe side and I don't want no as well so uh, I'm just going to leave you at this three now hand that to save you I so just click on save and it's gonna ask you for the name. You can just say students student table. Okay, so now we have one table. Can you see that? It shows up here. We have a table and I'm just going to leave it at that. So um, close this. If you want to get back to this the previous page, just right click on the table, the table name student, and say open table definition that's the definition of the table then you can add extra columns and you know uh, but if you want to modify the data inside the table rather than the definition say show table data right click on the table name and say show the table data because we don't have any value inside it's going to be empty obviously so uh, now we can populate the data with values you know we can do it <laughs> from the database it doesn't make sense but we going to create an application and feature I'll do one uh, my next video will be about actually creating a front end to populate the database you know from your application web application so now what I do is uh, I'll input some values into this database and the first value is going to be uh, this James the last name will be Ace this red the red is telling you that the this the cell has changed but it has not been committed to the database that's just why it's sending you so if if I tab away from that and go to the next uh, one you can see the red is gone the, that means that value has been committed to the database so uh, can you, as you can see the student ID was I didn't write number one but it's now been populated with number one because um, uh, because it's the identity it's going to increase automatically so let me tab away from the student ID ID and go to the student first name and this one will be Charles Pierce. Can you see again? If I tab away the student ID will be number two. Yeah, that's what it means. So right, uh let me input more value into the term right again. Robot very and uh, let me see, John. Let's <laughs> If you wonder where those names are coming from, those are the name of the people I work with. <laughs> They're gonna kill me if they find out. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, let me input one more. Uh, who else do I know that is popular? Okay, yeah, a manager. <laughs> I love him, Richard Green. So uh, that's it for now. So I have six data in my database, and uh, if I try to close it, let me just if I try to close it, okay, that's it. Everything is coming to the database. You can view it anytime and just say show to the data. Uh, the data is in the database. So um, I'm going to stop the video now, and uh, I'll continue with the video later because I don't want it to be longer than 10 minutes. Thank you.